Okay, so it's my pleasure to be here and to share with you my experience with, uh, one year experience now with this new system called for this city and in my department this system is mainly dedicated to uh, interventional radiology in the liver. So for those of you who are not very familiar with the system, this is a commercial view of the system. So this is something like a combination between an angio suite and a CT scan. As you can see, the CT scan is moving on rails. And uh, when we look at this uh, worldwide map, you can see that most systems come from Japan. It's not surprising. Uh, I'm sure in the next presentation we'll have more data on the past history of the system. But what is interesting is that this system now is spreading out uh, from Asia and is going to Europe and to America, meaning that radiologists, surgeons, probably all clinicians now understand uh, more and more that multimodal suites are very important for their daily practice. And I will try to convince you that this is the case. So this is a picture of my room just after installation. So as you can see, in, in this case, both systems are in parking position. Uh, and uh, regarding the, the CT scan, I have the Aquino 1 uh, CT. Uh, probably you know it, 640 slice CT, many interesting features, but probably two are very important. The first one is we have a large bore, and this is very important for interventions. And the second is this ability uh, to have a very large spatial coverage provided by the multi-detector array CT. It means that we can image the full lever, the whole lever, in only one rotation, and this has many applications, as you will see uh, further. Another picture here of uh, the system, both systems working together. This picture came, comes from uh, Tokyo National Cancer Center. We are very impressed by this kind of cockpit for the control room, so many, many screens, many keyboards, many mouses. And fortunately, now Canon provides us with uh, uh, large screens collecting the equivalent of four different screens. It means that we have less keyboards, less mouse, and it's much more practical uh, in uh, small control rooms like mine. I uh, would like to start by the problem of dose, because we combine two different imaging modalities, both delivering radiation to the patient and to you. So we can imagine that we will increase the dose to the patient and to you. And this is clearly not the case, and I will show you why. So we have some interesting dose reduction tools, because they are very user-friendly, very practical. The first one is Lysome. When you use usually a con conventional magnification, you have your magnification but you also increase the dose delivered to the patient. With the live zoom technique, you have the magnification without paying the price of an increased dose, just because it is something like a numerical zoom. So it's very easy to activate, and to be honest, this is the first function I activate for any patient I have to treat. You have just to click on a button, and you have this magnification activated, and as you can see uh, on the right, uh, the image quality is uh, quite good, so you can use it every day. The second important uh, tool is uh, uh, called spot fluoroscopy because you know that collimation is something very important to save the dose for the patient. And with spot fluoro, you can select any box on the screen, any box you want, and you will have real-time fluoroscopy within the box, and you keep your background around, you keep your landmarks around, very, very practical. It improves your visual comfort, and at the same time, for sure, it, it saves the dose. So very interesting tools we use every day. But the problem is that with this technique, you will change your practice. And I will show you a typical taste session we, we do now. So the first point is to put the catheter inside the celiac trunk. Then we go from the NGO to the CT. And just to show you the workflow, it's very easy. You have just to adjust the table eight to move the table onto CT position and then to make the CT gantry moving, that's all much easier, much faster than convim CT preparation. Then you have the box here, the 16 centimeters. So one rotation is needed to cover this volume. And you have immediately all the volume, in this case of a metastatic uh, patient with a net tumor, uh, you have all the volume. And you can see the spleen, the stomach, the liver, uh, the pancreas, everything you want on every plane. So you can, if you have a very nice image, you can select the plane you, you, you want. But more interestingly, you can select the point from which you want to deliver the treatment. You can put a crosshair everywhere, and the crosshair then is visible on the 3D volume. 
And this 3D volume is modified because you, ch you choose your, uh, your um, position depending on the, the catheterization, and then you use only 3D road mapping with all uh, those reduction tools activated, and you have just to put your micro catheter onto the point and to deliver the treatment. So it means that we don't need DSA acquisitions anymore. And at the end of the treatment, new CT scan acquisition, so new one rotation, that's all, to see which part of the liver we actually uh, treat. And to summarize, so for all taste procedures now, we use two CT acquisitions, one at the beginning, one at the end, no DSA anymore, and only fluoroscopy based on uh, 3D road mapping. And this probably explains why we strongly reduce the dose delivered to the patient. You can see here the results. Uh, taken from 140 patients now, and we had the opportunity to compare Fordicity with my previous system and with the latest version of my previous system. We compared the same procedures uh, done by the same operators, and uh, as you could see, uh, look at the BMI of the patient, they are uh, all comparable, so uh, what, what is the explanation for this reduced dose? Three different ones. The first one is the 2D flat panel dose much reduced with Fordicity because of technology, because of the own technology of the system, but because also of those reduction tools shown before. The second point was the CT acquisitions. The CT acquisition, the dose delivered by CT is much lower than Conbeam CT, it's not a surprise, but much lower than CT acquisitions. Why? Because of the detector technology, because of iterative reconstruction algorithm, but more importantly, because of only one rotation rather than helical acquisitions. And the last point is that because we don't need DSA anymore, we spare the dose due to DSA, which is sometimes very, very high. So on these three points, we can explain why uh, with the Fordicity, you will not increase the dose, you will save the dose. And now we have the failure detection software. Very interesting. I will show you a case, a practical case. So you have just to select uh, the CT arteriography done before. Then this is an interesting case of a small HEC nodule at the dome of the liver. You will see this nodule at the dome, clearly supplied by the right inferior phrenic artery. You select the tumor, then you select the tip of your catheter. It's easy to do uh, on the sagittal view. And then the software will calculate all the feeders of the tumor. It's a very fast process. You can see the results here. And we are not surprised to see the right inferior phrenic artery. But uh, we were surprised, it was unexpected to have a right sympathetic vessel uh, coming from here, uh, also supplying this, this tumor, which was actually located in the left lobe of the liver. And if we look at this artery, it comes to the right, and then it will go back to the left, and then uh, will supply the tumor. So it was completely unexpected and very interested in this case. And when we go back, we can see that actually it was the main feeder was uh, the, the inferior phrenic artery. So to treat this patient, first we inserted coils within the inferior phrenic artery, uh, obviously based on 3D roadmap, and then we went to uh, the second artery in f coming from the right hepatic vessels and injected drug eluting beads super selectively. What is important with this system, it is not only something dedicated for expert center, it's something very important also for young radiologists. This is the first case of polar vein embolization of a young radiologist uh, of my staff. As you can see, she first punctured the right, ves uh, right portal vessels and, and put a catheter in the main portal trunk, and then she used the CT scan to get the 3D uh, portography. Then you have to choose uh, the optimal angulation to see very well the origin of the left portal vein branch you want to spare, for sure. Then you send the coordinates to the C arm automatically, and then the procedure becomes very easy because you have just to inject your mixture of lipodol and glue and to play with the flow. In this case, it is very, very easy because of the 3D roadmap, also because of the anatomy of the patient, long, very long uh, right portal vein, which is uh, uh, not the case in all patients, obviously. And even for complex cases, so we, within five minutes you can complete this treatment, even complex cases with cases like trifurcation or, or, or more complex anatomy, you can modify the angulation as many times as you want to secure the procedure and to embolize the right vessels. 
For this procedure more complex, venous deprivation we described recently, clearly this is a procedure very easy and dedicated for such systems. Why? Because we use US to puncture the portal vessels. We use US to uh, position adequately the plugs within hepatic veins. We use CT to get the CT portography, and we use uh, fluoroscopy, we use NGO uh, to guide and to embolize the vessels. So clearly this is a procedure for multimodal suites. Another case, this is a uh, complex liver ablation. We have this patient with two HCC nodules at the dome. One was visible under US, the other one was not. So first I inserted a uh, radiofrequency ablation needle within the first nodule, and I inserted another one in the same nodule. You can see the both needles here. Then I came to the, to the celiac trunk and then to the liver arteries to inject lipardol to tag the second tumor. And as soon as the tumor was tagged, you can see the tumor here, the problem was the lung, so uh, the objective was to clear the lung, and to do that, we insert a various needle within the pleural space, it's very easy to do, very fast. We inject CO2 to clear progressively the lung, and as soon as the lung is not uh, present uh, anymore, we can insert the, the DRF needle, the last RF needle, inside the tumor. And because we have this large spatial coverage, we can control this patient just to click a button to have a 3D acquisition and then to find the needle uh, plane and to be sure that we are within the tumor and we can have a look to organs that could be uh, around the tip of the needle. And we did ablate this patient. Another example here with a single metastasis from breast cancer. This metastasis uh, raised two problems. The first one was it was not visible under US. The second one, uh, this uh, tumor is close to a bifurcation of the right hepatic vein. So uh, this tumor is prone to uh, early recurrence due to its sink effect of ablation uh, because of this uh, big vessel. So first we punctured the right femoral uh, vein and went to uh, the right hepatic vein. Then I inserted a O45 guard wire to, to exchange for a balloon catheter, 11 millimeter balloon catheter, in order to clamp the right hepatic vein. So the balloon catheter is now in place. And because this tumor is not visible under US, we also catheterized the superior mesenteric artery uh, to use CT portography to insert our needles. So then we use the CT scan. So you have the CT scan, we inject contrast medium inside the, the superior mesenteric artery. You can see now the tumor, so it's very easy to put the needle inside the tumor. But because the tumor was a little bit larger than expected, I decided to insert a second uh, RF needle. So the tumor is here, and you will see the second needle here, okay, we have two needles. Now we can inflate the balloon, and you will see obviously the balloon on the CT as well. And then we can ablate the patient. And this is the final result. You can see that the ablation zone just after, uh, after the treatment largely covers the tumor as well as a safe margin around. So this is a typical case for multimodal suites. And my last point will be for the imaging, but I want we speak of this, about the same thing. What is 4D imaging? This is a 3D image of a hand. This is a 3D image acquired by a CT scan acquisition, okay. And now if we redo this CT scan acquisition over time, this is a 4D image of a hand. So we can use this technology uh, in our practice and we can do the same with a cat inserted in the celiac trunk. This patient was referred for taste of metastatic net and what you are seeing is not a DSA acquisition, this is a 4D CT acquisition. You see, it is a 4D acquisition with only MIP uh, reformation in colonal view. And because you have acquired all the data, you can reformat uh, the images as, as, as many as you want. So you can use every plane, every rendering technique. And as you can see in this case, 18,000 images, but uh, relatively low DLP, so this is clearly acceptable. And I think we can do that in practice. Another example here in the pelvis or in the polar vessels, so very interesting, very nice, very beautiful, but the question is, is it really useful? And I try, try to convince you by this last case that it is useful. 
We have here a patient with a large aneurysm close to the superhemesanteric artery, a patient with prior acute pancreatitis, and the objective was to embolize this aneurysm. Uh, we first catheterized the superhemesanteric artery. You can see the aneurysm progressively filled, but it's very difficult to find a feeder, and I didn't want to waste time uh, doing many acquisitions, the essay acquisitions, or going selectively into each branches of the superhemesanteric artery. So I decided to use 4D imaging, so many 3D imaging sets. And if you have a look to one of them, you can see here the, aneur the aneurysm. But it's not so easy to find a feeder even on this set. But during this time, the videos were reconstructed. And if we look at those videos, you can see that we have a jet bleeding. The jet is here. The jet is here. And the jet, this is a picture of a jet taken from this video. So it means that we have one 3D acquisition performed during the jet. We have just to find it. And so we selected another one. And you can see the aneurysm again, but this time you can see the jets. And if you have the jet, you have the artery responsible for bleeding. So now it's easy to zoom the image, to put a crosshair on this artery, on the point from which bleeding occurs. And then the point is highlighted on the 3D view. The point is here. You have just to select the appropriate angulation to make your catheterization feasible, easy and then to use 3D roadmap to go to this point. And when we go selectively uh, to this answer, you can see that we could not see any bleeding. So it was very important for us to have the point of bleeding. And we decided, because we are very confident in our 3D roadmap, we decided to coil the point. So we used the sandwich technique. We coiled before and after the point. And what was interesting, immediately after we did a US Doppler examination, and you can see that the aneurysm was tr completely thrombosed. We did another 4D acquisition. You can find the, the, the coil is here. And as you can see, the aneurysm is not visible anymore. So in this case, clearly, 4D imaging uh, saved time and made the procedure much easier. Now time to conclude. This system, 4D system, is first an excellent NGO system, not so well known, very, very user friendly. Uh, providing great image quality and with many basic and expert tools you can use every day. Second, it is an high-end CT scan with a large spatial coverage, giving much better images, much easier acquisitions than any con beam CT could ever do. But this is something else, the 4D CT. This is not only a CT and an NGO. This is something else because there is a permanent <laughs> communication between both imaging modalities, and this is clearly interesting. Radiation exposure is not low, is lower than uh, classical NGO suites due to the tools, due to the technology, due to your practice uh, that will change. For liver IR, I think it secures the procedure for young radiologists and that's a very important point and it allows an optimal management of complex cases and I am convinced that 40 capabilities in the future will change our practice. Thank you very much. And so,